So in this video, we're going to be analyzing the genealogy found in the Gospel of Matthew. And we're specifically going to be analyzing the numerical significance in Matthew's Gospel. So what do I mean by that? So as we know from the last few videos, the first verse of Matthew reads, The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And then what follows next is the genealogy. And then Matthew concludes his genealogy with the following statement. So all the generations from Abraham to David were 14 generations, and from David to the deportation to Babylon, 14 generations, and from the deportation to Babylon to the Christ, 14 generations. So what's Matthew telling us? He's telling us that basically his genealogy is broken up into three columns. The first column starts with Abraham and goes all the way down to David and has 14 generations. The second column begins with David and goes all the way down to the deportation to Babylon, and that likewise contains 14 generations. And the third column begins with the deportation to Babylon and then finishes with Christ, and that likewise has 14 generations. So the question is, why has Matthew laid out his genealogy in this fashion? And, this ans uh, and an answer is provided by David L. Turner in his commentary, and he notes that the reason why he's gone from Abraham to David is for this reason. In the 14 generations from Abraham to King David, Matthew demonstrates Jesus' sonship and aligns Jesus as Messiah with the historical outworking of the promise of God. So this is really a straightforward point. The reason why he goes from Abraham to David is because of messianic reasons. David is, of, uh, of course, associated with the Christ. Why does he go from David to the exile? Turner writes, In the 14 generations from David to the exile, Matthew recounts the, the decline of Israel under the judgment of God. And the last column, Exiled Christ, he notes, And the 14 generations from the exile to the Messiah, Matthew traces the faithful purpose of God in fulfilling his promise despite the rebellion of his people. Turner then goes, to make, goes on to make a very important point. He writes, Brunner's suggestion that the genealogy may be visualized as a leaning capital N is helpful in laying out the structure and theological implications of the genealogy. The first time I read that in his commentary, I was very confused. What does he mean, a leaning capital N? And then I realized that this is what he means. So here is a leaning capital, capital N. And as you see, we begin with Abraham. And it's pretty lowly beginnings, nothing spectacular. Abraham is just a wanderer. But then we ascend all the way up to King David, and this is the height of Israel's power. King David represents the, the greatest they've ever achieved. But then there's a decline to the Babylonian captivity. We lose the kingship. Israel, Judah, Israel has no more kings. And this is the lowest point in Israel's history. And now Matthew is saying we are once again ascending to a place perhaps even higher than King David, and that is to Jesus. So as you see, there's a capital N. We start low, then go high, then go low, then go high again. So I think that's a very helpful way of laying it out and something that should uh, be memorized. Okay, but that really hasn't answered the question, why the number 14? Why has Matthew used the number 14? He could have used any number. Why 14? And there are basically two explanations as to why he's used 14. The first option is Gematria, and R.T. France lays out this option in his commentary. He writes, there may well be a further nuance in that the numerical values of the Hebrew letters for the, for the name David add up to 14. And then he tells us in Hebrew, D equals 4, W equals 6, D equals 4. So when you add those all up, you get 14. He goes on to note, Revelation 13, 17 to 18 is the only clear New Testament parallel to this sort of calculation known as gematria. So right there, he's referring to 666. But it is well attested in rabbinic circles, and the clear emphasis on David through the genealogy suggests it may be in Matthew's mind. If he did not do it deliberately, he would probably have been delighted to have it pointed out to him. To be honest, I don't really like this explanation, and it seems that R.T. France isn't really convinced by it either. I mean, at the very end he said, you know, Matthew may have not done this deliberately. I don't like this explanation, and one of the main reasons why I don't like it is because every time numbers are used in the Bible, there's always a very special number, and that is the number 7. And when I see the number 14, the first thing that came into my mind is, well, that's 2 times 7. So I think a good explanation as to why Matthew uses 14 has to be related to 
the number seven. And that brings in our second option. Jesus is the seventh seventh. What does that mean? So basically, as we know, Matthew divides his genealogy into these four key moments, Abraham, David, exile, Jesus. And he tells us that there's 14 generations between each one. 14, 14, 14. Well, we know that 14 can be broken up into two sevens. This one can be broken up into two sevens, and this one can be broken up into two sevens. Now let's count how many sevens we have all together. We have one, two, three, four, five, six sevens. We have six sevens. Why is this important? Well, let's go to Deuteronomy 15, where we read, If any of your people, Hebrew men or women, sell themselves to you and serve you for six years, in the seventh year you must let them go free. Likewise, in Deuteronomy 15 he writes, The seventh year, the year for cancelling debt, is near. So it's clear that in Israel, people were meant to be slaves for six years, but then in the seventh year set free. Or the, after seventh year, all the debt was cleared. So by Matthew giving us six sevens, it is as if he is saying, the hard work is over, the debt is over, the slavery is over. With Jesus, we're going, to an, going into a new period. We're going into the seventh seventh, the ultimate Sabbath. And this point is made very nicely by N.T. Wright. He writes, Wright writes, Matthew hints at all of this in his own way, right at the start of his gospel, by arranging Jesus' genealogy in three groups of 14 generations, that is six sevens, so that Jesus appears at the start of the Sabbath of Sabbaths moment. As we have seen, people in Jesus' day were pondering, calcula calculating, and longing for the greatest super jubilee of them all, the 70 weeks, that is 70 times 7 years of Daniel 9.24. The great Sabbath was coming, soon they would be free. I think this is a very strong argument, and it basically can be visualized like this. So basically, Matthew is laying out his genealogy so that Christ appears as the seventh seventh and represents the rest of his people, the ultimate Sabbath. And I, I really like that explanation, and I really think that is why Matthew has arranged his gospel in such a way. So in the next video, we are going to be really uh, digging into, has Matthew made any errors, any apparent errors, how do we overcome these errors, so we're just going to be laying all of those out in our next video.